is a new skincare ingredient on store shelves and she is thick. These are pH... Excuse me? That was rude! <laughs> There is a new skincare acid on shelves that is available, and people, including myself, have questions. These are called PHAs, or polyhydroxy acids, and although they've actually been around for quite some time, we're all of a sudden seeing them in skincare. So first off, what are these? How are they different or similar to AHA acids or BHA acids, which you might know from acne products or from brightening serums? And then who is this good for, if anyone? Are they safe to use? What should we know about them? So again, these PHAs stand for polyhydroxy acids. If we break down that word, poly means many. And hydroxy acid you might recognize from your beta hydroxy acids or alpha hydroxy acids. If you see glycolic acid or lactic acid on your skincare, you might know those for being very exfoliating to the skin, helping with acne, scars, pigmentation, wrinkles, all of the things. Those are AHA acids. They're also water soluble, FYI. And then, you know, having suffered with acne most of my life, I'm very familiar with salicylic acid. Salicylic acid is the most commonly used BHA acid, and it being a beta-hydroxy acid is fat soluble. Now, what is a PHA? So PHA, poly means many, and it's a hydroxy acid, but how do these play in and around these other acids? And even more importantly, what does it do and who is it good for? Since this polyhydroxy acid is mini, it's basically a big molecule, which is why this Ulla Henriksen product calls it the fat glow facial. Polyhydroxy acids are basically large AHA molecules, and they're mainly sugar-derived or sugar-like molecules. Now what's interesting about them is that because they are larger, they do tend to sit on top of the skin, and they do most of their work on the surface, whereas AHAs, the alpha hydroxy acids, have very, very small molecules and penetrate much, much deeper. So you could argue that the AHAs work better, but unfortunately for a lot of people, the AHAs can cause redness or irritation to the skin. If you've ever used a glycolic acid peel, you know that they burn, obviously. So PHAs are for sensitive skinned individuals or for people who have eczema or rosacea. A lot of times if you have a skin condition like atopic dermatitis, um, your skin is too sensitive and it's hard to use things like a glycolic acid or a lactic acid or even a malic acid, which comes from apples, FYI. Yet the polyhydroxy acid has been shown to be safe for people with sensitive skin. That was from a literature review uh, done in 2004. Which again is interesting because we haven't seen these products for so long even though they've been around for quite some time. So brands are starting to put these in their products because they can be safe for sensitive skinned individuals. And polyhydroxy acids do a lot of the same things as alpha hydroxy acids, just less intense. So again, they do help with brightening and they do help with mild exfoliation of the outer layers of the skin. Remember, our skin has many different layers and that top one, the stratum corneum, is the one that's constantly fluffing off, sloughing off. And this product, as well as other acids, can help that. Now the other interesting thing is that because these are sugar-based molecules, or carbohydrate-based molecules, they like to hang on to water, meaning that this can also act as a humectant, having a little bit of a moisturizing or a hydrating factor. If you actually look at carbohydrates inside of the body, um, you ever notice how you can feel bloated if you eat too many carbohydrates and wake up the next morning? That doesn't actually mean you gained 15 pounds. <laughs> that means that carbohydrates you just consumed are holding on to water. It's like bloating or water retention. And within the body, carbohydrates hold on to four parts per water, which of course can cause a little bit of bloating or swelling. Well, PHAs, being this carbohydrate base, work in the same way. The way the water molecule acts with many of the carbohydrate or sugar molecules is by holding on. So this can help to plump up the skin and give a little bit of hydration. So again, think of this as like the new girl at the office and she comes in, nobody really knows what she's about and the other AHA and BHA acids are sitting at their desks like, okay, we know what we're doing here. Are you gonna be working on our job? Are you gonna do something different? Like, are you a threat to our job or are you gonna enhance what we do? And this girl comes in and she's thick and she knows what's going on and she's like, hey, I'm just gonna help smooth it over. I'm gonna help you do what you do better and for those people who can't even use your services, 
we're opening up a new job market over here. Ouch, I just smacked my own chin with the fat glow facial. I was also doing some digging online and I found that most articles are from beauty-based sources. Myself personally, I like to look at scientific and evidence-based sources, which there are a few, but not that many. Most of the beauty-based sources were like The Cut, and they were talking about like Glossier or Allure Magazine or InStyle, which is great, but a lot of times beauty publications or editorial publications don't always cite the facts correctly, and sometimes they take facts from studies that were not conducted properly. And there's a lot of issue with that within even the scientific community because if you don't know statistics and if you don't know how to pr like conduct a proper study, a lot of the results you get can be varied. Um, and you can kind of point them in the direction of doing what you want them to do, which can be frustrating. But the good thing about polyhydroxy acids is that the specific polyhydroxy acids that seem to be used most widely have been used for many, many years, um, a lot in the food industry actually. And they've just now kind of become a trend in skincare, but they've been around for quite some time. And again, there was a literature analysis showing that PHAs actually worked very well with microneedling for those who are trying to treat scars or other damage to the skin. It also does a lot for photo aging. So for instance, sun damage, sunspots, if you didn't put on your SPF and your skin is starting to show it. PHAs can help, and again, because they're safe for sensitive skin, those who have eczema or rosacea, or who have a Fitzpatrick phototype skin that is more ethnic or more prone to damage, this PHA could be very helpful for you. The cut says that gluconolactone is the most common PHA, but they also mention galactose and lactobionic acid. Now what's interesting about that is that, yes, these do have different names and they are different molecules, but again, they failed to mention that they're all these basic sugar carbohydrate bases. I mean, if you actually look at galactose, it is pretty much the same as glucose. The, it has the same chemical formula, the only difference is the structure. So think of it as like baking a cake. What goes into a cake? You have flour, water, sugar, chocolate, vegan eggs, right? I can bake two cakes with the exact same ingredients. I can put one in a circle pan and I can put one in a square pan. And the structure of the molecule, even though it's made up of the same things, can actually impact how it works within the body and within the skin. So again, this galactose PHA, which is very similar to glucose, is in here. Lactobionic acid, I don't know much about. I know that it is occasionally used in medicine, and that it's actually a byproduct of different chemical processes. And then gluconolactone is actually used in food processing. It's actually pretty acidic. And I could be wrong about this, but I think it's used in like when you're pickling things, like when you're trying to make sauerkraut or pickles. <laughs> um, but again, these are essentially different sugars that are being put into these products and being sold to you. The only two products that I've ever tried that do have PHAs in them are this Ula Henriksen Fat Facial, as well as the um, Solution by Glossier that has your AHAs, your BHAs, and your PHAs. Um, I do know that I think The Ordinary has some PHA products, and then I also believe that Paula's Choice does, but there are more as well. I I hope we get some drugstore options soon, but for now, that is what PHA acids are. And if you want a video on AHA and BHA acids, you can watch that here. And if you want to know how to add a PHA into your routine, you can watch a video on skincare routines here. Always remember to be beautiful inside and out, and I cannot wait to see you in the next video. Love you guys. Bye.